The MATLAB built-in function interp1 performs interpolation of an x, y dataset at a point xi or at a vector of points xi, and the method parameter can be chosen to select the type of interpolation. If the method parameter is set to nearest, then MATLAB performs nearest neighbor interpolation. This is essentially a zero order spline. MATLAB will choose the value of yi corresponding to the value of y nearest the point xi in the xy data. If the method parameter is set to linear, then MATLAB generates a linear spline and interpolates linearly between xy data points to find the value of yi corresponding to xi. If the method parameter is set to spline, then MATLAB performs a cubic spline interpolation using the not a not boundary condition. PCHIP is another option that is a shape preserving cubic Hermite interpolation, which we did not discuss, but essentially this method preserves the minima and maxima of the data because cubic splines can sometimes have odd behavior near the endpoints. To provide more control over the boundary conditions, you can use the MATLAB built in function spline. Spline takes two arguments, an X data set and a corresponding Y data set and produces a structure representing the piecewise polynomial making up the cubic spline with not a not boundary conditions. The spline function can also calculate cubic splines that have clamped boundary conditions by adding two additional data points to the y input argument. If the y input argument has two more data points than the x input argument, then the first and last data points of y will be used as the slopes for the first and last spline segments at the first and last data points, thereby imposing the clamped boundary conditions. The structures that are produced by the spline function, denoted y n a n for not a not, and y clamped for the clamped boundary conditions, contain all of the coefficients of the piecewise polynomial necessary to compute y at any value of x in the x interval. Those values can then be computed using the MATLAB function ppval. ppval takes two input arguments. The first is the structure containing the piecewise polynomial, and the second is an x value or vector of x values at which you wish to evaluate the piecewise polynomial. These commands will evaluate the not a not cubic spline and the clamped cubic spline for the values in the x vals vector and assign the results to y nan vowels and y clamped vowels. We'll illustrate this with an example in MATLAB. Here we've created variables representing the vectors of x and y data from the example in section 5.6.7 on page 207 of the methods text. We've also created a vector of x values containing 100 values that span the domain of the x variables from 2 to 7.5. Here we can assign the value of the cubic spline interpolated at x equals 4 to the variable y4 using the interp1 command. Alternatively, we could ask MATLAB to interpolate our cubic spline for 11 values from x equals 4 to x equals 5 by putting a vector input in for the third argument. The interp1 command uses the not a not boundary condition when spline is selected for the method. If we want to use the clamped boundary condition, then we should use the spline command because the spline command enables us to add two values to the y vector, where the first value should be the slope of the first spline segment at the first data point, and the last value should be the slope of the last spline segment at the last data point. If these are not included, that is the length of the first input argument vector is equal to the length of the second input argument vector, then MATLAB will choose by default the not a not boundary condition. This creates a structure containing a piecewise polynomial that we called y clamped. The coefs matrix, which resides inside the y clamped structure, contains the four coefficients of the cubic polynomial for the first spline segment, the second spline segment, and the third spline segment. We can now use the ppval command to calculate values of y corresponding to any input values for x. So we've already created a vector of x values that contains 100 data points 
between the first and last values of our data. The ppval command takes a piecewise polynomial structure and a vector of x values as the input arguments and produces the corresponding vector of y values. We can now plot our data along with the calculated cubic spline values. We can compare this cubic spline to the cubic spline calculated using the not a not boundary conditions, calculated using the interp1 command. Here we see that the not a not boundary condition and the clamped boundary condition result in very different cubic splines. In the next video, we'll talk about another method of interpolation based on trigonometric polynomials.